the more you feel like something deep is guiding me. And now you have one foot on that path the mystics knew so well. And eventually you come to recognize that that light is grace. Mm -hmm. And that leads you to contemplation and it leads you to prayer. And that's the mystical light. It's not one of going to a monastery and thinking some kind of angel is going to appear to you. This is what it's like in the real world. This is what it's like. Following that light in the ordinary life with extraordinary guidance that every day talks to you like this. Hmm. So, so, so but, but when you're, you're talking about this narrow gate to cross, so you're, you're picturing it as a gate, but really when it when this kind of experience happens, it's just all of a sudden it's very fast, and then boom, you're you're into this expanded, uh, you're into the light. So, why but it's is a narrow it, gate. Why is it a narrow gate? Why do you define it as a narrow gate? Because it is a narrow gate. That, that narrow gate, that light is very delicate. It's very fast and it's very delicate. And you have to seize the moment. You have to seize the moment that light talks to you. Yeah. Because it's very, it, you have to seize the moment. It comes quick and it comes fast. So how does that feel? Can you describe that, 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 that little moment? It feels like truth. That absolute truth where you know exactly what you should do. So it's like a lightning? Well, have you ever known what you should do versus what you, but your pride stops you? Do you ever have that experience? Everyone. Yeah. Yeah. What's, it feel, what's it feel like? Let me ask you. What's it feel like? That's it. That's all what there is. Yeah. is, is that, would you call that lightning or would you call that truth? That's what truth feels like. Yeah. That's what truth feels like. Mm -hmm. That's why, why they say the truth will set you free. That's why people fear the truth, because it's so accurate. It's so powerful. Mm -hmm. But I guess it depends on the intensity of the moment and how much it's close to your true soul mission and purpose. Because I guess when you're living those moments of truth like that, and it's so much in your heart, and it's, there's so much pain in it, it could be pretty gigantic experience. It always is. It always is. Truth will always change your life, no matter whether you consider it a gigantic or a small, because it, it ruptures. It ruptures. It always ruptures an illusion that reason is trying to hold in place. When reason says, no, the person should call me because they hurt my feelings, that's all nonsense. That's all illusion that pride's trying to keep or, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's when you're saying that um, God is entering within us. I, that is a, that's an expression of God. Truth is an expression of God. And that's what the mystics understood. Mm -hmm. Truth is an expression of God. See? Yeah. As simple as that. Yeah, when you explain it, you have this way of explaining it that we get it. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. I, I wanted to ask you also about this mystical experience, though, go, going back to it, because you said that Newton had this had one, and it feels like you're seeing it from everything from the eyes of your soul. C can we all have mystical experiences? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think the mystical experience visits everybody. It, it comes differently to people. I mean, you have extreme mystical experiences like, like sa what we call saints, like Teresa of Avila or John of the Cross or uh, uh, Buddha. Those are <clears throat> the mega saints that had mega, you know, mystical experiences. But I think that an experience of coming to truth is a mystical experience. A mystical experience of coming to a deep understanding about something that you didn't understand a minute, minute ago that brings you great calm is a mystical experience. The, um, many times people will tell me about experiences in which they're in crisis and suddenly they come to an understanding that everything's going to be all right. 
that everything's going to be okay. And it's an unreasonable thing to believe, given the crisis they're in. They may be in a hospital emergency room waiting to find out something about somebody. And there's no reason why they should know what they just know. But they know it. Those unreasonable messages are forms of mystical experiences. They're not classical in the sense of apparitions. You see, people misunderstand mystical experiences. They think that they are, because they're so used to them within a monastic setting. But in ordinary life, they happen all the time. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we have this yearning for it, but at the same time, as you say, we're we're so scared of of it also, and we seem to push it away. Right, exactly, it's scary. exactly. But it's but what's a, what's what's frightening, I think, for so many people, is that a mystical experience is actually an experience of truth far greater than a person automatically experience you know if I, I if i would put it this way if all we ever knew if all of us were living in a real smoky dirty bar room and that's all we ever knew and a mystical experience was like a breath of fresh air like you could find your way out of that smoky filthy bar and suddenly you're out in a gorgeous meadow with flowers and fresh air and sunlight. You should be afraid of that because one second of that would make you crave that for the rest of your life. You would go right back into that bar and you try to tell people, you're not going to believe this, but outside that door is this blue sky and, and the sun and, the air, the air, you wouldn't believe how fresh the air is. And, and, and there's water and, and, and the grass and these flowers and, and colors and I can't, you, the world, the world out there and, and the sounds and birds and, and down here it's filthy and smoky and you, you have to trust me. You have to trust me. Just get through that narrow gate. Just get, just, just get through. And of course we'd be afraid of it because then we come down there And we're one among many in a world only we've experienced. And yet every one of them is craving fresh air Mm -hmm. because every one of us was born to breathe. Mm -hmm. And we know we're born to breathe better air than the air we're breathing. Mm -hmm. We crave that air. We crave that oxygen. Yeah. And then we want more and more. So then we get back into the reason because we want to experience the, uh, this again. We want to understand how we did it and how this works. And then we stop that flow. We stop. No, you can never stop it, darling. You can never, never stop it. But then at least being present to it. You can never stop it. You can never stop the search for truth. You can't because we, we are, we are just like in a relationship you leave people who are not telling you the truth and they will leave you. Mm -hmm. We are compelled to find truth. We we are compelled. And and we look for truth in each other and you can't stand someone who lies to you and you will leave them. And eventually you can't stand it when you lie to yourself. Yeah, but when you want that mystical, those mystical experiences and the green and the, the great air and this amazing sensation, you're always in search after that for to experience this another time and then another time and then another time. This is what I was talking yes, about. Yes, but you, but the search for that comes through the search of becoming a congruent person. That's what I'm saying to you. You can't find it in your mind. Yes, yes. You find it by you becoming congruent, by you saying, where am I not a congruent person? Where is my heart different than my mind? why, Why do I, when I am angry, choose to pass on my suffering to someone else? Why do I think I'm entitled to do that? Why do I pass my suffering on to another person? Why, when I have a bad day, do I come home and think it's okay for me 
to pass that bad day on to somebody else. Why is that okay? Why is it okay for me to be greedy for what belongs to somebody else, whether it's attention or power? Why is it so difficult for me to empower another person when I know I have what it, the grace in me to do that? Because at the end of the day, every decision we make, if you really, really reflect on what a decision is, either I empower you or I don't. If you boil all your choices down with everything you do, you are either empowering another person or choosing not to. You either do that by kindness or by being honest with them or by serving their self-esteem or you don't. And at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself and only yourself, why am I afraid of empowering another person? And if you can go that deep within yourself, you are on the mystical path.